Hi guys, I'm Soumya and I'm back again with another video. I hope you're all well and safe. And today's video is very special because I am going to be interviewing the author of The Final Weekend, A Stoned Tale. I've reviewed this book on my channel in July. You can check that review out. And I have with me Neil Cassidy. Thank you so much for doing this, Neil. And welcome to Soumya's Book Station. Right on, Soumya. Thank you for taking the time to have me. I'm really glad to be here. So guys, Neil has a really cool giveaway up on his website. So guys, this is an exclusive giveaway for Indian viewers. So do check that giveaway out on the neilcassidy.com. And also, it's a very cool website. So check the website out as well. I will leave the link to the website in my pinned comment of this video so that you can click on that link and check that giveaway out. Yeah, that's pretty much right, Sonia. Yeah, I mean, come on to my website, the neocassidy.com. Uh, if you search under the top bar, Ramblings, uh, my Ramblings, uh, click that and you'll be able to see the giveaway that I'm having uh, only for Indian viewers. That's right, man. Okay. So, guys, let's get started with the interview. So, Neil, my first question from you is that how and where did you get the idea of writing the final weekend, A Stoned Tale? Well, I mean, you know, it all started off with just notes. Um, I wrote notes here and I wrote notes there. I was living in St. Croix and the Hurricane Maria hit in uh, September of 2017. Uh, so I was stuck on the island for about six weeks uh, with uh, no power. Uh, you know, nothing to do other than say snorkeling and swimming and whatnot. I sat down one day and took the little notes I had and, you know, kind of put them together. And, you know, the majority of notes were just um, ideas I had had from, you know, things I had done in my life prior to and whatnot. You know, I wanted it to be very funny. I wanted it, uh, people to enjoy, you know, the ride, uh, for lack of a better term. So I also wanted to talk about, you know, some, some kind of deeper um, contemporary issues that we deal with in society right now, uh, bullying, racism, homophobia. I wanted to put my name on something, um, uh, a book or a novel that I kind of did my way. Um, and, and that's that's what I came up with. So yeah, you know, I mean, the main catapult was uh, to tell a story that I thought that people, you know, would like. I found that reading should be uh, fun and entertaining. So um, I wanted to throw that, but also throw some real world issues in there. And um, since you've read the book, you know that it's, uh, it's not just all about a, a good time. Yeah. So Neil, my next question is that how long did it take you to write The Final Weekend, A Stone Tale? Uh, let's see. I'd say probably about 11 months to 12 months. Um, you know, I started uh, when that hurricane hit. And uh, like I told you, saw me, it just kind of, you know, started out slow at first and then just kind of hit me. Um, it took me about all in all, let's see, nine months to, to write it, and maybe about four months to uh, edit it. So maybe I was a little off, about 13 months. Um, you know, when I finished writing it, I um, uh, had 115,000 page, pages, words, and um, about, two, about 315 pages. Uh, when I was done editing, I ended up about 99,000 um, words and some change, and then about 284 pages. I hadn't written in anything since college. And, you know, when I went back to the beginning, yeah. I thought, to, you know, when I was editing, I thought to myself, you know, who, who wrote this? This is terrible. Uh, and, you know, but it was without practice. And, of course, you know, practice made me better. It, it's by far the most... Um, fulfilling thing I've ever done. And, um, you know, I'm really glad that I took the time because as you know, um, unless you're Ernest Hemingway, uh, you can't turn out a novel in six weeks. Uh, so it takes time. Um, yeah, so that, it took about that long. So next up, I want to ask you, what kind of message do you want to convey through your book? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you, you know, the main thing is, as you know, the book is 99% fun. You know, it's, it's a good time. It's, it's, you know, six college friends that are, that are celebrating their last weekend together, you know, before they enter the real world. You know, if I were to say, you know, a main message I wanted to send with this, it's that, um, 
and enjoy life. Uh, it's short. There's so many cool things out there, you know, whether it's just looking outside your window or, you know, meeting a cool person like you or what have you. Um, there's a lot of things to smile about. Um, and life is short, man. You know, so my intention with this novel is, and I, I think you get an idea from reading it, uh, is, is again, two things. Be good to people, you know, um, even if they're different, even if you share um, different values or, or different ideas or, or, or something like that, you, you should still be kind to people, you know, good to people. So th those would be my two main messages. Enjoy life, uh, be good to one another. And uh, yeah, that would be it. Okay. So Neil, what would you like to say to the Indian readers? That's super easy, Samyam. Uh, buy my novel. <laughs> um, you know, it's funny, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but, you know, based on kind of like the info I've gathered, uh, India is by far the country that, that reads the most. Um, you know, so I guess with the Indian viewers, it's, you know, the fact that y'all read so much, I, like, I just love it. You know, so I hope that, you know, your Indian viewers would, would check out the novel and, and have an open mind that, you know, okay, we, we've got some raunchiness here and, and, you know, we've got this over here. But, but we also have some important messages, you know, just kind of life messages. And so, so the main thing I would say is, uh, again, buy my novel. And uh, the second is, you know, have an open mind and, and, and you know, read it and, and hopefully enjoy it and, and listen to some of the messages that it, that it does have in it. And again, if, if your viewers do take the time, I'd, I'd like to thank them. Thank you very much. Well, I, I am certain that they will. You have made a very strong appeal. So do you have a personal favorite and a least favorite character in your story? That's a good question. Um, so my least favorite characters, uh, you know, it's saw me, you've read it, so you would know. Um, it's really anybody that's just negative or, um, you know, is not good to other people. So there's, there's a guy in the novel, his, uh, his name is Douchebag in Red Polo Shirt. Uh, and of course, he tries to beat up Justin and, um, you know, really anyone negative. Uh, you know, Trent, when he leaves Schroeder's place, um, he goes past an anti-gay demonstration and all of that hatred there. Uh, particularly the two girls, uh, Jenny and Tabitha, that they were, they were awful, absolutely awful to Ling Ling. Um, you know, the guys that tried to pick a fight with the grandma, uh, you know, I mean, right outside of the restaurant after lunch. Uh, as far as uh, favorite, that's easy. Uh, Nini. The fruit vendor. Uh, she's the first uh, non, um, you know, like uh, major character that you run into. And uh, Nini is actually my mother. So uh, she is my favorite. Um, as far as uh, other characters, the grandma is awesome. Um, she is by far the one that I've gotten the most uh, emails and messages and comments and um, you know, you're introduced to her uh, right off the bat in the blurb of the book. Um, and also you hear the characters talking about her and you hear the excitement in the characters, you know, prior to the reader even meeting her. Uh, not only is she just really cool, but in, inside she's a good person. So, so yeah, those, those are my least favorite and favorite characters. So the next question is about the grandma. She's a legendary character and you mentioned about her earlier as well. And you also told me that a lot of your readers also mentioned about her. So is her character inspired from an actual person or is her character a dramatic exaggeration? She, um, well, yeah, first off, she is by far, the, I get a thousand times more messages about her than anyone else. Mm -hmm. um, she's totally fake. Um, you know, I mean, I have, there are some hints of her, you know, that maybe I would see in myself or, you know, maybe I've seen in somebody that I had met in life. But um, the grandma, I wanted her to be the, the exact opposite of what we expect of a grandmother. Yeah. You, you know, you, there are certain things, I think, yeah. you know, that you associate with the grandmother and <laughs> this ain't it. She is a good person, man. Um, she has got a heart of gold. And you also notice throughout the novel, it's, uh, 
It's not grandma. It's the grandma. Grandma is always capitalized uh, because she is this, you know, significant figure. So, yeah, I hate to break it to you. She's she's fake. So, Neera, tell me, how do you handle criticism? Oh, negative reviews or what have you. Well, to be honest with you, I, I don't read all of my reviews. I, I can't, I, there's no way I can keep up with all of them. You know, if somebody doesn't like it, that doesn't bother me at all. Um, you know, my, my whole thing with the novel is, is, you know, I hope that people see the message that I'm trying to give, you know, in the novel. I do hope that the ones that, that don't like the subject matter necessarily enjoy the writing style. Um, they enjoy the characters. Maybe they can associate it with someone they know. No one is going to like everything that somebody puts out. Um, you know, and if I were to, to dip and dive into every negative thing, you know, it's, it's just like you and I talked about earlier. You need to look at the positives in life and what have you. So, you know, uh, negative criticism is, as, as a reviewer and as a very popular reviewer, you know that's part of the game. And um, yeah, man, it, uh, it doesn't bother me at all. That's a very cool attitude to have, and I really mean it. So, Thank you. Yeah. Would you like to explain the cover of the book? Because after all, you are on it. <laughs> I am, yeah. Um, so, you know, the main reason behind the cover of the novel is to kind of grab people's attention. You know, if, if you're walking around a bookstore or what have you, you know, when you just see the final weekend, the stone tail, say just on, you know, a yellow front, it doesn't quite grab you as much as, you know, a guy with a blow up doll, uh, smoking weed naked in his bed. So, you know, my main intention is to, was hopefully to grab readers' attention with that, you know, and that would draw them into the excerpt um, and, and possibly check out the book based on that. What do you like to do when you are not writing? Oh God, okay. Uh, well, um, uh, I like to read a lot. Um, which I guess is kind of evident. And then um, I tend to go, well, not, not now with COVID. I, I tend to go to the gym a lot. I like to work out. Um, uh, you know, I'm really big into outdoor activities. Uh, I really enjoy snow skiing, um, running, um, hanging out with friends, uh, that sort of thing. I guess like, you know, if, if you were to press me and say, you know, if you could do anything you wanted to do today, that would be easy. I would want to snow ski. Um, other than that, you know, I lived in the islands. Um, golly, a lot of my adulthood, I, I really enjoy snorkeling, just chilling out at the beach. Any new book in the works? Yeah, man. Um, well, I'm actually writing the screenplay for this now um, because I would love to turn it into a movie. And um, I've had a lot of nice reviews that where people have said it would, it would make a great film. And, I, you know, you've read it. Um, and I'd like to think that it flows smoothly. Um, and, and um, you know, I think that it would be good material for something like that. Uh, I'm also actually, I've already written the outline for my second novel. Um, which has to do with uh, some people that go to an island and it, it has to go with the uh, seven deadly sins. Um, and uh, believe it or not, I'm actually writing a uh, young adult novel, which is the exact opposite of what you've seen and you know what my second novel would be. But it's, it's just a really solid idea I have, man, that I'd like to try uh, so those are the two things in the works now. And um, Somya, I've got, uh, uh, I've got a drawer over here that's filled with post-it notes with ideas and, wow. you know, things like that. But, but those are my two concrete things that I have going on right now. So guys, that was my interview with the author of The Final Weekend, A Stone Tale, Neil Cassidy. Neil, thank you so much for doing this. Guys, do not forget to check out the giveaway on the neilcassidy.com. Again, it's a really cool website. And if you want to know more about the book, then you can check out my review as well. The link to the website will be in my pinned comments and the link to my review will be in the description of the video. Somya, thanks so much for having me and taking the time. I had a blast talking to you today. And I hope your subscribers take the time to check out my novel and also they enjoyed the interview. I, I certainly did. 
I did too. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much, Neil.